Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create chalk effects inside of Illustrator. So I have my document open here, um, in the background I've got a JPEG file that is uh, close to a kind of a white clean chalkboard photograph, and then the main focal point of course are these vector shapes, so they're not editable text, um, you could use this effect on editable text, not a problem, but in my case I have um, shapes here. Um, I'm going to zoom in to one of these characters, the S, because I, I don't want to um, apply this effect to everything across the artboard. It'll tend to be a little bit longer and a bit more drawn out to wait for Illustrator to process that edit across everything. So just focus on one character for now, the S. And then with that in mind, just to show you that in the layers panel, I have all the fronts of the letters in a layer called lettering here. And then now this kind of offset shadow, which is in a layer lower down which is that. So I'm going to approach those with two different types of styles. So to start off with, I'm going to select the letter S in here. And then for this, we'll definitely need to work with the appearance panel. The appearance panel, if you've never used it before, um, it categorizes the selected object. So this looks as though it's got a, a white fill, uh, no stroke, and you can edit these properties individually. It works like a layer stack. So Things like the stroke here will be higher up and therefore in front of whatever the property is of the fill in there. And that will come into play a little bit later on. So from here then, um, I've got three colors to work with for this. I've got a pure white, a 5% black and a 20% black. So I'm gonna start off with this fill here and it's left clicked on there and it's active. And then what this will allow me to do then is to go down to FX, down to stylize and then choose scribble to create a scribble effect. Uh, inside of here then, um, this is um, usually set to default in here um, and then it will allow you to change the angle. Mind you'll have to have the preview checkbox turned on as well, but essentially it will give you a type of scribble effect. There are lots of presets that you can choose from, so you've got sharp in here as an example, you've got uh, tight. So lots of different things you can actually access from this menu in here, but I'm going to go with a default option. So. First off, I want to create something similar to this. I want a nice kind of scribble effect, but I want this to be a very nice uh, articulated S in here. I don't want a very loose interpretation. So in terms of the angle, I'm going to set all of these to be 226 degrees. And then in terms of the path overlap, I don't want any of these lines to overlap because we'll lose this lovely characteristic of the, of the letters in there. So I'm going to set that to zero. I'll hit the tab key and I'll go down to variation. So with the variation, I'm going to set that to a very low amount for how that style of that uh, of that scribble is. 0.5 in there for the point size. Hit the tab key, it takes me down to the next one, and then it's the stroke width. So obviously you can go really thick with this, or really very thin. And, and again, I'm going to choose a really low amount in here, down to one point. And then click on the next field. So curviness, um, if you want to have the appearance of straight lines going crisscrossing across one another, you can have it set to a low value for angle, or you can go very, very loopy like this. So for mine, I want to set that down to uh, zero for that one. I don't want any kind of curviness. I'll click in the next field down, which is variation. So I don't want to vary those lines when they zigzag across inside of these characters. Well, for this one, I'm going to set this to 25%. And then I'll hit the tab key and we can see the update in there. So it will give us some slight gaps. I don't want this to be completely flat because that would look pretty much like the fill color. So a little bit of roughness in there. In terms of spacing, well, you can have a really tight space or you can really loosen these up um, and you can have um, a lot of gaps between these in here. So I want some really tight gaps in there. So I'm going to set that to one point again. I'll hit the tab key and we see that update. And then, time, and then in terms of the variation, well, that's set to 0 0.5 at the moment. I will increase that to two points, again, just to get a slightly roughened effect inside of there. So we don't want it to be completely neat. It's going to try and uh, evoke the, you know, a sense of chalkiness in here and roughness. So with that done, I'll click OK. And that applies that effect to just the fill color of this. So you'll see now, I've got one more thing to do, which is to change the opacity of this. If I click in here, then I can go to the blend mode menu and I'm going to change this to a blend mode of lighten. So that will keep all the light colors, the white of this nice and visible. And then in terms of the opacity, I'm going to drop this just a touch to 80% and then press return. Just to knock that back a little bit. I'll then collapse the fill for this one. Make sure I click on it. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom and add a second fill, which is what you can do with the appearance panel. So when I click on that, um, I will 
collapse that one. This is the one I'm now working on. It's higher in the stack in, in terms of the appearance panel. So up here, this flat white color will appear in front of the scribble effect at the moment, which is fine. We're going to alter this. Um, but in terms of the color, I'm going to change that to a pure white in here. Like so, fresh return. And then um, I'm going to change this to have a grainy effect across it. So to do that, again, this fill attribute is active. Go down to effects and then I'll choose effect gallery. This is a Photoshop filter and you can still use many of these inside of Illustrator. And when I load it up, it shows a preview of the character inside of there. You can zoom in by going into the bottom left hand side and it's this grainy effect that we're going for inside of here. So this is pretty much fine. You will have three sliders to work with uh, over at the upper right hand side. And um, it just happened that this was one of the filters that I used last in here, but it's in a group of folders in here. Mine was from the sketch folder and you'll find reticulation just there and you click on the thumbnail and it will show you the preview. So in terms of density, you can go really low and that will show a lot of the darkness and very little of the fill color in your layer. And as you drag this closer and closer towards the right hand side, you'll get this grainy effect where we get a real mix in the middle there between the light and dark. And then if we drag it towards the right hand side there, you're going to get predominantly the fill color in there with some very little gaps in it. But for us, we need to set this to 20 in here and I'll leave the other options as they are. We just want a grainy effect and I'll click OK. So that applies it over the top. And then again, we need to change the blend mode of this. So I'll go to the fill just for this new one. Click on its own opacity value and change that from normal uh, to hard light. So down here to hard light. And then I'm also going to change the opacity as well of that one to 80% and press return. So that's the main fill done inside of there for now. Um, and then with that done, I can go to the stroke. Uh, so the stroke for this one, uh, we're going to set this one to white. That will just put a plain one point stroke on there. But what I do want to do is I want to put a brush around this. So I'm going to go to the brushes panel down here to the library, go to artistic and then to artistic chalk, charcoal and pencil. And then from the list of them inside of here, charcoal thin. So I'll left click on that one and it applies that charcoal thin effect inside of it. And then I'm going to go and expand open the stroke, just the stroke active in here, back down to effects. And then I will choose distort and transform and then choose the roofing filter. I'll turn on preview inside of here and then you'll get something that looks nothing appropriate to what you want, no doubt. Um, and again, we need to dial these options down in here. So roughen, I'm going to set this to 0.1%. I know that sounds ridiculous, but we want just a little bit of roughening around here. Um, I'll hit the tab key to go down to the next field. And in terms of the uh, detail for this one, then we need to set this value to 76. So we want lots of detail in here. So this is going to give us this kind of nice edge around there. So we've got a chalky rough brush and then we're roughening the edge of that as well. I will set the points in there to smooth um, and then with that done, we're pretty good. I can click OK and again, that applies that roughening to just the stroke value inside of there. And again, I'm going to change the opacity for that one from normal and then pick hard light from there as well and then just press return. From there. So that sets up the appearance for the main body inside the characters there. Now, you might notice a little bit of a scribble going across there. You could always go back and then if I just collapse these in here, go back to the original fill. I could go back to scribble, make sure the preview's turned on. Just take a look at the um, variation in there. So yeah, that's looking, it's a little bit better. I don't want any of the scribble coming out beyond the shape of the character in there. So little tweaks like that sometimes are required. And I'll click OK with that one now set to 7% and not 25. Now, having done that, I want to apply that effect across the rest of the text. So if I click on path up at the top, I can then go down to what's called graphic styles and you can capture the appearance of that. If I click on the create new style, it then appears inside of there. I can then go to view. I can choose fit out body and window. I can then go to my lettering layer. I can left click to select everything in that layer and then go down and click on my graphic style to apply that to all of the other type shapes in there. Like so. So that's kind of a, a basic chalk effect. What we want to do next then is to get this lovely kind of shadow effect going on down the side in here with something very similar. So I'm going to pick up again my zoom tool, zoom into that letter S, get a good clear view of it. 
and I'm going to select this time just those shadowy shapes at the side in there like this so this will give me a good preview back to the appearance panel uh, and in terms of the fill for this one um, I need to then go to the swatches panel and go to the library down the list of patterns and the built-in patterns that we've got inside of here I've got basic graphics and then I have basic graphic lines uh, and the one that I'm going to choose from here is at 10 lines per inch 40% I'll left click on that one now the line at the moment the, the in there the pattern that's in there is black it's not what we want but we will tweak that I'm going to close that down now I've got it because it's added it to my swatches panel in there I also don't need the um, brush pop up inside of here so I can get rid of that and then the first thing I need to do then is I need to change the appearance of this. So I'm going to double left click on this swatch and it'll take me into pattern editing mode. And then all I need to do from here then is to select that and then just making sure that my stroke attribute is active in the uh, swatches panel. I'm going to choose to apply a 20% black in here to that, to the stroke. So I don't want black in there, I want just a 20% strength of black. So it's going to be very, very light in this case. And then when I'm done, I'll go to the top, I'll click on done. That changes the appearance so far. I need to go back and just select those again inside of there. And then um, with those active, I'm going to go up to the object menu, go to transform. I'm going to choose rotation first of all, and I don't want to rotate the objects. I'm going to turn that off and just want to rotate the pattern inside of here. So. Um, uh, 300, 305 in here is what I tried last time. It's gone back to those settings because that was the last time I used this dialog box. And I'll click OK to that one, but you can see you can just rotate that pattern around inside of the object in there, but it leaves the object where it is. So, um, yeah, something around about that sort of angle in there will work fine for this. I'll, I'll click OK. And then the other thing I want to do is go back to object, then to transform, and then choose scale. I want to scale this down in size. So with preview turned on, and when only the transform pattern turned on, I want to uniformly scale these down. I can just tap the down cursor key or just hold it down until I get them to a point where they're small enough for this to work. I want a nice degree of articulation on these. That looks good. I'll click OK. And of course that is applied to the fill of this object in here. So if I click back on the fill, click to expand it open. Again, I can go to FX. I can go down the list to Effect Gallery. Um, I'm going to stick with uh, reticulation uh, and it will ma match all the settings that I applied a few minutes ago. Click OK and again I'll just roughen those up ever so slightly and then I'm going to change the opacity of this fill to screen and then in terms of the uh, opacity we'll leave that set to 100 inside of there and then I'll click away from there and we've now got the appearance of those little lines creating the shadows inside of there. Again, with that active, I can go back up to the top, uh, activate the path, go down to my graphic styles, save that as a new style in there, go to the view menu, and then click on fit art body window. Again, select everything in that layer, and then apply that new style in there to those characters and the shadowy bits, like so. Thanks for watching folks, as always if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber and you want to check out these videos and save time, create killer artwork then uh, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you'll get notification every Friday we post here on this channel and until next time, farewell.